Yeah. We call, we call, we call shots round here. Tell them hijacks not to come round here. Slow down round here. Don't make too much noise. You know who run the block round here. We drop, we drop, drop round here. Tell the coppers not to come round here. Slow down round here. Don't make too much noise. You know who run the block round here. We drop, we drop, drop round here. Tell the hijacks not to come round here. Slow down round here. Don't make too much noise. You know who run the block round here. You know who dropped the drop round here. Drop Nation. Come out to play. Let go. What do you see? Oh, we just surfing the uh, wave of Judah. We just surfing the waters of Hawaii. Don't mind us. What do you see? Love to Hawa stew. Love to the copper thread. Aha, to the tribe. Love to all the copper thread. <laughs> Love to drive nation from plane to plane. Do you see water? What do you see? I know what you've been brainwashed to see. I'm asking you, what do you see? What do you witness internally? So when we get, you know, into this, you know, back into this, and I'm going to let it flow, man, with Wayne Steiger, man. This is part five. <laughs> I hop to Akati Thai battle. My sister, thank you so much, because honestly, this is, uh, you know, truthfully, we needed this. Every part of this is a door that's open, that's connected to the door that we're walking through. We can dodge the hijack, you know what I mean? It ain't nothing but a thing for us. You know what I mean? It's not about the details. It's about the actual flow. We're not just in this for the details. That's your mental hustle. That's our mental hustle when we're just trying to get the information super highway. We're in it for the flow. So, you know, that which flows with, without resistance. You know what I'm saying? You can't resist the water. You can't resist the flow. So when you get the drop, you know it because it's not resisting the flow. This is a flow we've never witnessed before. So now we have a perspective, and the perspective is surfing the wave, and we know that there's a flow, we have a perspective. And what is your perspective of these two lines intersecting? If you can't read it, up top it says I am. We're just talking about the name. That's where we cut off on part four. We'll get back to it. I am, right? I am. That is what I am. No, I am that I am. So I must translate it. I am that I am. Very robotic of you. I am. You got to feel this, man. The creator is telling you, I exist. That is what I am. Existence. I am. That is what I am. Water. Water. W-A-T-E-R or Wata. Ha, Wata. Now, we looked at the cross before. We know that this is our Hebrew indigenous Aleph Bet. We know that this is the Tau. This is the sign. 
so we can get out of the Jesus mode of Christianity. Telling us this cross represents the Savior. Oh, I mean, we can get to the Savior, but remember there's only one, Isaiah 43. There's only one I am. And who are you? Are you water, fire, air, and earth? Are you Wata, fire? Are you the ether? Huh? Are you the Eretz? Eretz? Are you the earth? And what does it mean and how does it relate to the four corners is what my family J. Stu asked us, man. You know what I'm saying? On the top of thread, he said, man, what does this got to do with the four corners, man? So I just want to address him this way, man. And just say, I love you, brother, first of all. Support the J. Stu uh, baby fund, second of all. And, you know, lastly, my bro, that's a great question. You know, it's, it's that's what we meditate on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We could have... Five parts could be about this one drop right here, and it's worth all five parts. It's worth the five hours of drop to get to one significant piece. And love to Hawa Stu for bringing this out. Think about what you call the four corners, meaning Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico. What's the other one? You know, Arizona. Oh, of course. Because the whole thing is called Utah. Before there was an Arizona, before there was a Colorado, before there was a New Mexico, wow. a while there was Utah or Hawa Utah. Now, if you line this up on a map, let's say, you divide this into four corners, what does it mean for that area? And what does the X mark the spot mean? Remember, we're looking at it in two dimensions because it's drawn on a piece of paper, right? But imagine it in three dimensions. Wow. Oh, wow. Imagine it being cube, 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 cube in the middle. You know, you got to get in other dimensions with these uh, symbols because these symbols, you know, they can only tell you so much, but you got to raise your octave. I am is at the top. We're talking wa ta. At the bottom we have ronak. Almost sounds like ruak, which is your air, your breath. Remember your breath. Ruak, ronak. Then you got the e beshash, what they're calling earth, and no, which is fire. When we talk about dragons and dragon lines and energy grids and crossings, energy lines on your land, energy crossings, vortexes, we're talking fire, air, earth, and water. And if you're lining this up on your four corners, you know, what does it mean? I'm not going to tell you what it means. I'm just going to ask you the question. What does it mean? Who got the drop? So left to how stew. Left to how stew for giving us the right things to meditate on, man. How I stew. Yeah, we're just digging on the Hawaii and the hey We got this before, you know, we just kind of surfing away. Because we're talking about the name and it's important for us to get to it, man, to really remember Hawaii, Hawaii. It's one of the most ancient excavated sites, or this uh, Kaubab, Kaubab El Hawa is the most ancient excavated site in Israel, they say. El Hawa, God creator, is the key to the host of linguistic forms, while El, a common Semitic word or Shemitic word for God, is well remembered in the Bible. Hawa. The ancient name for the creator. Because he's going to say, we don't know the name. Uh, you know, we'll just call him, you know, universal, you know. <laughs> you know, and all oh, very cool, cool. But he then also admits that the tribe has their own 
frequency. The tribe has their own connection. Israel has their own connection. So we're not just calling it anything in general. We're saying, what is your secure breath? What is your secure teeth? What is your secure breath? We're just talking the picto. We're talking the, well, they're saying L. We know we're talking about Hawa. We're talking about the frequency. Every letter is each other. They're all reflections of all 22 letters are all reflected in each other. So the L is the, of course, the Hawa. Right, the strong power leader represented with this ox head, this strong ox. You know, back in the day, that is a great representation because that's what you needed. You know, you're talking about doing some, um, you know what I'm saying, true land, you know, uh, uh, nurturing. You know what I'm saying? You, you're talking about, you know, really tilling your land. You're going to need an ox. You know what I'm saying? That's how it rocks. So what's that represent the strength? You know, without that ox, you don't have really... <laughs> You know anything you know what i'm saying in terms of your uh harvest and everything else you know what i mean so you need it and that's just a representation so that's the strong powerful leader and that's now going into your alphabet your alphabet your alphabet is alphabet they became alpha beta alpha beta alpha alphabet alphabet the gom foot so once the strong powerful frequency enters your house enters your temple your body once you remember once you awaken once it's wakey wakey then you gather look at look i didn't write this right so we're just going to the picto we're just surfing the wave and we're seeing our story we're realizing that this this language this frequency tells our story in many different dimensions it can talk about us as a nation us as drop nation it can talk about us as 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 an it, this will always explain your walk a microcosm a macrocosm because all we did was you know hear that sound of our strong powerful leader you know what i mean it entered our house our family we formed a family, we gathered, we walked. We walked through a door with Jay Stu. You saw it, you witnessed it. We formed a wall of protection. Through that became an entrance. We actually bought land. Now we have land. We walked through an entrance. Now it's <gasps> ah, ah, a revelation, a breath, a wisdom. Wisdom is now rocking with drop nation now we're able to unseal these books unseal the mysteries now we're remembering that is your air that is your breath that is your air that is your breath that is your air water air earth Fire. When you talk dragon lines, what does a dragon do? do? Breathe fire. You're talking about elements, man. Elements, man. Of course, you're talking H1961. Every time it says I am, every time it says God in the scripture, it's always bringing you back to the same primitive root, the same verb. But they're calling hey I. What we dug on was Hawa is Hawa, the earlier form of Heya, a sense of one who is existing. Hawa, Hawa. While El, a common Shemitic word for God, is remembered in the Bible, Hawa, the ancient name for the Creator, is not remembered. The reason is simple when the Israelites were given and they tried to give us the Yahweh during the Exodus, the new name. Really, were you given a new name? Or is it the same ancient name that was remembered before but not remembered anymore because you're in amnesia? And they take you out your frequencies and they say, Yah. And then we say, Well, what do you mean, Yah? What do you mean, Jah? <laughs> What do you mean Yahweh? And why is Yah an exclamation of defiance or dismissal? 
popularized in 1812. So they're waking up, you know, but they're giving them this frequency in 1812. Yahoo. Oh, Yahoo.com. Come on, man. Wake up, Negro. And I told you this and I told you before, man. We family. We all family. We all giving our heart to this. So you call the creator Yah. You call the creator Yahoo. We might say, okay, well, this is why we don't. So just, you know, rock with how we, you know, you know what I'm saying? Where we're surfing at, you know, and we got all got to be family regardless because we all comprehend that we all are one. You know what I'm saying? This is one thing. So let's not be divided over something that, you know, we're just waking up trying to put together the pieces for. I'm okay with not being correct about something that I'm willing to surf the wave on. I'm willing to dig on. I'm willing to look at it further. We're willing to look at it further. And say if it's all about Yah, wow. then why are they saying Hawa? What they're saying, hey Yah, what they mean, Hawa? Why are they giving it as a primitive root every single time? You see God in Genesis, Exodus, all that. It's all H1961. It's all talking about to exist, to be in existence, to abide, remain, to continue, to stand. Be in, be at, be situated, to accompany, to occur, come to pass, to be done, be finished, be gone. Hey, y'all, how? They try to still sit, they still put the H-A-W there, you know what I'm saying? To exist, to come to pass, a beacon, all together, accomplished, to break, were you, were you not broken? To cause, to come, to pass, do, faint, fall, follow, happen, have, last, pertain, quit, self, require. What is the most I require of you? This is all about your path. All about your requirement. Requirement to what? To vibrate up. To exist. This is your requirement to exist as frequency. You must choose up. You must remember Hawa. The ancient name for the creator. They no longer remembered Hawa. The new name for the creator. They learned to forget the old Hawa. Oh, it became an old Hawa. And when we dig on Hawa again, we're just talking about the Picto. We're talking about the Aleph Bet. Aleph. So you can you we can do this in many different ways. You can do it from the Strong's Concordance. You can do it from separate, substantiating research. You can do it from etymology. You can do it from pictopaleo. And you're still going to get whatever you get that frequency. You go, It goes into your house, your temple. You gather. You move through a door. And the first thing you get when you walk through the door is ha, hey, ha, wah. The sixth and seventh, the fifth and sixth letters of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. The minute you walk through the door together, you get your framer and your shaper. Your ha and your wa. Your framer and your shaper. Your ha and your wa. Your secure breath. So we can decipher it. Wayne Steiger can do his best, but he can only, you know, give you an abstraction, a, a uh, you know, snapshot. And you have to go within, as we've been doing, what we call surf the wave, creating the ripple. And we're all connected already. We're talking about a secure breath. We're talking about our framer and our shaper. Our mother and our father. And we'll be back in that pop above. Let's go. I want to get back to it. Oh, uh, yeah, we will be back in that Peru Salam. Love to the bro, man. We're going to dismount on this as promised, man. So let's just get to it, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got the Sephir, so make sure you pull this up. Click on the link below. So he's going to read from it. We got it up already, so I didn't drop it in the library yet, but I will. No diggity. All right, man. Where I need to go. Where I need to go. Is that the library? Oh, I'm not going to go here. Go here. Alright, so we back in the Sefer. Yet Zira, chapter 1. Whoa! <laughs> By R. Wayne Stagy. 
All right, we already started this job. We are gonna pick it up, man, where we left. And uh, man, keep surfing the wave, dodge the hijack, you know it's coming. So, you know, dodge the hijack. But don't worry about it because, you know, you'll know it when it flows, man. So take what you need, chew the meat, spit the bones, let's go. Consciousness that humanity is at? I agree with what I'm reading. We can't handle it. I mean, if I was able to even pronounce the name, <laughs> you know what would happen? You'll explode! Both of us, all of us, would just go... <laughs> Oh, man. And that's when we started digging on it, because, you know, he's talking about the I and self, infinite being. That's how he wants to refer to it. We just broke down the how, wow. We got it through the Strong's Concordance. We got it through separate substantiating drop that we've gotten before. Go dig on our uh, drop called Hawa the Creator. Go dig on Hawa the Breath. You know what I mean? All those. Go dig on Natural by Law. By, Natural by Law, my bro broke down Hawa wonderfully, man. He broke it all the way down, so... You know, we just surfing the wave, man, and this is where we're at. But again, that's not separating us, you know what I'm saying? You can say, hey, ya, hey, ya, all day long. You can say, ya, who, uh, you can say, ya. We know who we're talking about, and we know we love our creator. You know what I mean? Right now, it's about uniting. Uniting everyone who says this or says that. We know we're talking about our most high above the barrier. All right, don't let that separate his family. Real talk, man. Real spirit. Let go. We'd be freaking blown into infinity and beyond. You'll be blown into beyond, man. So, like getting power from a nuclear plant, mm. in order to make that power usable, you have to have a transformer. Okay, listen up. That steps it down... So far down to where it's usable and manageable. Damn. So now they put a transformer more than meets the eye. A transformer to dilute the frequency. Then they call it God. Well, how much have they diluted? Why do they keep diluting? Yahweh. Why go to Yahweh? Look how far they diluted it from 1869 so they wake up today. Oh, we're not going to call him God. We'll call him Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Love to my, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, so-called Hispanic family. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we drop the drop around here. You know what we're talking about, man. But you know what I'm saying? I got some bros, man. You know what I'm saying? My, uh, <laughs> you know, homies from around the way, man. They'd be like, yeah, man. You know, I don't speak Spanish, but you know what I'm saying? They'd be like, yeah, something, 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 way. Yeah, way. Nah, way. I used to be like, why you keep saying way, way, way? Everything was way, way. But that's like they brother. That's they, that's they, you know what I mean? You know, they got their own meaning. But the way is the why. And what they're really saying is like, they're, they're saying the creator's name. Like, they're really like, why? Like, it's a term of endearment. Why? Why? Before it was the ya, it was the why. And they keep taking you out of your why's. Just like they keep doing the va. See, the vibe over here used to be the WA, W-A-W, changed to V-A-V. -V. Why? Why are they diluting things? Why are you going from the Yahweh in 1869, hypothetical reconstruction of Tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, he's about to drop something and try to make it make sense, and okay, anybody can make whatever you want make sense, but we're just trying to say what's the drop based on the assumption that the Tetragrammaton is the imperfective of the Hebrew verb. Hawa, earlier form of Heya. So there's a diluting taking place, and it has to do with a W and a Y. You know how they treat you the teach you the vowels, the spell A E I O U, and sometimes Y. Y is always the devious one. Y is always tricky. Well, Y is pretty tricky. 
Honestly, I mean, I'm you know, we're all we're all building here. But you're like, where do you get the why? Where's the why coming from? You know, when you dig on the English. Now look, look at the Latin, look at the Greek. There is no why in either one, right? You don't see the why. Where's the why? So they pronounce things differently. Only this English has this sometimes why. A-E-I-O-U is a vowel. And sometimes why, you got to admit, there's some trickery going on. You know, if you're talking about the Yud, if you're talking about the Yad or the Yud, that's being pronounced E, they're saying, and as they diluted from the Picto to the late Hebrew, right before they get to the modern or right at the modern, this Yad becomes a E. E. They're not even saying what we're saying, yeah. We're just saying yeah, because we've been taught like that. But look how they pronouncing it. The E, that becomes an I. And here comes this J, right? <laughs> Which is their version of the cross. That's why they say when you're jaywalking, you know, if you're from the East Coast, you got a jaywalking ticket, you jaywalking. Well, that's cross walking, right? So their J is their cross. Jesus, all right, let's go. Without the J, it's the I. See how the I and the J are next to each other? Do you see the trichnology? And remember, that's just the E, E, E. All right, you got to admit, it's not translating to a Y or else there will be a Y in the Greek and the Latin. But somehow in English, it pops up as a Y and a W when a W. All right, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. So where's this Y talking about? What's this E talking about? We're only talking about Hawa, the creator. They learned to forget the old Hawa. They no longer remembered Hawa. Ha, ha. So all you do is get to the fifth letter of the Picto, the Paleo, to get the Ha. That is your mother, Ha. When you're inhaling, that's your ha. The if you hear it, that's the same ha. It's the and you exhale the wa. That's the tent peg going into the mother earth, securing the tent, the earth, the tent, the earth, the tent, the earth, the tent, the earth, the secure breath. Then it's a cutoff day. The seventh letter is a cutoff. Food, nourish, cut. A cutoff seventh day. Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom family, let's go, alright? So let's keep digging, man. Let's keep enjoying it as we dig and uh, take our time, man, and get to it. He's just talking about the name I had up here, Isaiah 43, you know, just to get on it, man. Just to get on it. This is out the new American Standard Bible. You know, we dodged the hijacks. We know we in English, but let's try to get the babies out, alright? They always put the babies in. Now, but now, thus says, whenever I see Lord, I know not to say no bullshit like that, because I know my creator, right? Because I know if I go to the uh, H1961, they're just going to lead me back to the hey, I want the hey, I'm only going to get back to the Hawa. When I get back to the Hawa, they're only going to say they learned to forget the old name Hawa. They no longer remember Hawa. Ha, wow. Let's get the drop. We're just talking about formation. Just talking formation. But now, thus says Hawa, your creator, old Jacob. Who is he talking to? Quick. Everybody. Did they just discover you, discover your writings and say it applies to me too? That's what, you know, Wayne Steiger keeps saying. It applies to me too. We're all, it does, it's not just about Hebrews, but then he says, oh, well, Israel got their own thing. Yeah, man, because you're talking about the redemption. We're saying we're in a redemption vibration. Israel redeemed. So we're not talking to everybody. I'm talking to the so called copper color Negro found here in the Americas. 
I'm talking to all the so-called Negroes that were shipped out of the Americas to other lands that still belong to our tribes here found in the promised land. I'm talking about the copper color American whose con was snatched away, whose priesthood was snatched away. But now, thus says Hawa, your creator, we're talking about the creations, the creator's creations, the creation's creations. Remember, Jacob also had the power to create according to the book that we're digging on, the Sephora we're digging on. Now, thus says Hawa, your creator. He's talking specifically to a tribe that he created, that your framer and shaper created. Not everybody. That's what we're getting at. We have the creator's creations and the creation's creations. That's when you get synthetic. That's when you get the synthetic hijacks that we're dealing with. But now, <laughs> that's when you get motherfuckers coming to your land saying, nah, I have your title because I'm born here, man. Right? You're like, no, this is my land. When and where does it work like that? I come here, I'm born here, I'm you. No, man. I'm natural. By law. But now, thus says Hawa, your creator, O Jacob, Hawakal. And he who formed you, O Israel, specifically your former. <laughs> I formed you out of clay. I shaped you. I formed you. I made you out of clay. Man, you're surfing a wave in a library. Keep dropping that drop, man. Let's go, man. This is a beautiful thing. Time battle. Really done dropped it, though. Really done dropped it. It's a doozy. <laughs> Cause it's gonna go into press of John even better, my sister. So don't even, uh, you know, we're timeless over here. My sister said, "Man, you know, I know he's about to hit that press to Jizan, but this is, you need, you need, sister, we need to vibrate at the highest octave when we dig on press to John. I mean, we already got the people asking who is press to John, who is the priest king? Where's your kingdom? Once you start asking, where's my kingdom?" We did our job. You know, you're asking where your kingdom. You're asking where's your priest king. You're asking about your framer and your shaper. Framer, we're in the pop of uh, This is the quiche. This is, you know what I'm saying, from the quiche, from the root. This is your indigenous, you know what I'm saying, this is your octoctine. This is your copper color drop. From the Maya root framer but now thus says Hawa your creator O Jacob and he who formed you framer shaper so your shaper is who makes something by modeling or molding pottery from clay or sculpture from a carved stone i form you he who formed you he so they're only giving you half in christianity the only they're cutting it in half and putting you in the loop and you're not going and vibrating with your mama and daddy no more you're cut off from your earth right you have no kingdom, right? You have no mother, right? Framer, your mother, we're talking wisdom, refers to one who makes something by putting things together. With, without wisdom, you have no kingdom, no fortitude, because you can't even put it together. You over there just, you know, in chaos. A building from stone or adobe, a meal from various ingredients, right? Doesn't your mother make a house of home? She connects it all. But your mother's law is your father's law. Your father's law is your mother's law. And law is vibration. And they are one. And the shaper is your daddy. It is your 
shaper he who forms you refers to one who makes something by modeling pottery from clay a sculpture from carved stone thus giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance think about this in the frequency we're in with this sepho the framer and shaper are the most frequently mentioned listen to this man the framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned they say gods we say powers involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants so when they did their recon the most frequently mentioned energy that you were tapped into was your mama and your dada your framer and your shaper your mama is putting it all together your father is molding you with frequency frequency forms with frequency molds when you go to 432 you know the somatic somatics experiments and all that you keep going up in higher octaves you keep getting more complex patterns and designs that is the vibration you're in and when you're surfing the wave and you're in the vibration you can now put it all together with wisdom the earth was created better sheep better sheep the framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned gods powers involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants their names imply that the creation involves giving frame and shape to matter that already existed comprehend it rather than conjuring something out of nothing Christianity this pair of gods or power or energy or unity was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest listen up again get it like it's the first time into your cup this pair of powers your mama and your daddy your framer and your shaper are so important that after the Spanish conquest Father Domenico de Viso used their quiche or root names to refer to the God of the Old Testament. Specifically, when he fully got the drop, he said, Wow, this is the power of the so called Tanakh, so called Old Testament. This is the power of the formation. Not our new thing, not our new test. Why would he have to separate it? We know there's babies still in the New Testament. We know we, they still put the drop to make the lie even sweeter. We know there's drop all throughout, right? But we're talking about the power, the power, and the power of what they separated and called the Old Testament or Tanakh. This pair of powers, your mother and father, your framer and shaper, are the most frequently mentioned powers involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. And after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Viso used their quiche name to refer to the power of the Old Testament. Because they separated you and they cut you out. We're talking about he who has begotten sons as they are called, along with Hanupu Possum and Hanupu Coyote, great white Pakari and Koati, uh, Sovereign and Kitzel Serpent. We're talking dragon, heart of lake and heart of sea, creator of the green earth and creator of the blue sky. With my right hand, I beat out the expanse of the sky. I beat it out. Rockwa, Rockwa. I beat it out. God, creator of the earth, mother earth, framer and shaper, wisdom, mother earth, and creator of the blue sky. That is your ha -wa. So we're digging on it together. He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. So he says, oh, we don't know the name. You are in a name. It's not just about in English. It's not just about your pronunciation. Oh, you pronounce it this way. I pronounce it that way. It's about the frequency. The name is a frequency. When he calls you by his name, 
He's calling you by the same signature or sequence. Adam. When the Most High calls you by his name. Man, where's my... When the Most High calls you by his name. He's calling you by water. I am water, fire, air, and earth. This is the name. Stop tripping. Alright, you know why we say Hawa. You get it. You do you. I know what you mean. We're talking about the ever present above the barrier. Got it? Get it? We good? Now let's not be divided. And let's know that all we're talking about is frequency of earth, water, fire, and air. We're talking about the cross. We're talking about X marks the spot. And when you have the balance, when you have the middle, when you have the balance, you are Hawa. You are Hawa. When you have the balance, you are Hawa. You have the revelation, you have the breath, the security. He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. Second Chronicles chapter seven. Let's see where I wanted to get out of this. Let's just get it from top. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering, the sacrifices, and the glory of Hawa filled the houses, and the priests could not enter into the house of Hawa because the glory of Hawa had filled Hawa's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of Hawa upon the house, they bowed themselves with their face to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised Hawa saying, For he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before Hawa, and King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen, twenty two and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of Hawa, and the priests waited on their offices, the Levites also with instruments of music of Hawa, which David the king had made to praise Hawa, because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all of Israel stood, moreover, Solomon hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of Hawa, for there he offered birth offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Sol Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. And at that time Solomon kept the feast seven days and all Israel went with him. And all of Israel went with him. A very great congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt and in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly. For they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month he sent people away into their tents glad and merry in heart for the goodness that Hawah has shown unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people, his people. We're talking about a particular people. Thus Solomon finished the house of Hawah and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of Hawa and in his own house he prosperously affected and Hawa appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice if I shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land or if I send pestilence among my people if my rain which are called by my name shall humble themselves excuse me if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. 
my people that are called by my name. They no longer remember Hawaii. Hawa, Mongolia, Hawa, New Zealand, Hawa, Hawaiian Islands, Hawa, Society Islands, Hawa, China, Hawa, Society Islands, Hong Kong, Hawa, Hawa, Solomon Islands, Hawa, and Finland. Hawa, and Peru, Bolivia, you know what I'm saying? The list goes on and on. So, my people that are called by my name, man, we've been scattered, and everywhere we went, we left a trail. Hawa, hawa, hawa. If my people, Yashara, which are called by my name, Hawa Israel, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin or their, what's, what's sin transgression law is transgression of the vibration and will heal their land, will heal their land. Your land is broken. Your mother is broken, but she will be healed when you just listen which is what we're doing here. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For my people that are called by my name, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. You are my hawa. You are my secure breath. What is the name? It is security. What is the name? Love to how I stew. It is water. It is fire, air, and it is earth. It is water, fire, air, and earth. Alright, so let's get it. We back, we back. Get it out the library, that pop above, man. Keep digging on it. We're just talking to the creator, the green earth, creator, the blue sky, your mother and your father that have been digging on it. Fray Bartolome Las Casas wrote in the 16th century that the people of Guatemala worship as their principal gods, the great father and the great mother that were in heaven. We're talking about your mama and your daddy. All right. Let's get back into this drop, man, before we go crazy. But now we got some foundation, that's, that's what we needed. We can keep surfing away. It is the same way with the name of the infinite being. Now, again, this is just, it's going to raise your level of awareness and consciousness. That's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say it's going to blow your mind because that, that's, a, that's a stupid saying. It's going to blow your mind. What the heck does that mean? Blow. Anyway, you see how you can get off on this? Words are important. All right, let's continue. The name Elohim refers to the manifestation of the delineation and definition only of the infant. The infinite, as we're going to learn, created the Elohim as an expression of itself. I told you this gets deep. So here are the 32 mysterious, mysterious paths of wisdom. Now, I encourage you to begin to learn the alphabet. I'm doing it during the day and at night. I'm practicing. Mm. 
They're practicing you. They're studying you. Judaism, study of Judah. Hawauda. Because if you can build, it's like understanding Sanskrit. It can be done. You can do it. All of us can do it. It's just a matter of, do you want to do it? Serve the way. So, now look at this same tree of life. Merely arranged again in a different configuration. This time, it has added the covenant of unity. Are you prepared to know what the covenant of unity is? Okay. We have to understand first wisdom. Your framer, your framer, your framer, she who puts the ingredients together, your mother, understand your mama. Who is Solomon praying for? Who is he asking his shaper for? He's asking to rock with his mama. He says, man, please grant me my mama, man. Fill me with my mama. But your mama got to trust you. She got to know you ain't crooked. She got to know you ain't no crook. This is your mama. We have to get the drop out. Because the covenant of unity, when I found this out, I mean, seriously, I just sat back going, this is incredible. So let's talk about wisdom, right? 32 paths are the paths to wisdom. Wisdom is pure, undifferentiated mind. And that should be mind. It is pure thought, which is not broken, in differentiated ideas. So it is an undifferentiated mind. Its pure thought is also not broken with different ideas. Hmm. Wisdom is above all division. Hmm. Wisdom is simply unity. The seeker of wisdom must learn from evil. Ah, ah, ah. That's the hijack. You see, they're going to tell you some shit and they're going to say, look, man, you got to learn from your wild side. He's going to... He, hijack's going to be a hijack. You have to be, have the wisdom to dis, <laughs> differentiate, to discern, to say evil. Are you saying twisted? Are you saying I must learn from my twisted nature? I must learn from the twistedness. I must learn to correct my twistedness. I must learn from my mistakes. Your twistedness equals mistakes, right? So when people say learn from your mistakes, you must learn from your mistakes. It sounds a lot different when you say learn from evil, right? But a hijack is going to be a hijack. You must learn from the twistedness whether it's your twistedness or someone else's you better learn and you better learn fast let go I'll let that sink in all of us most of us were all warned oh don't do that Ouija board don't do the tarot uh, cards don't do on, astrology man. so see see all they need is a little slither to filter their hijack through. All he needs is for someone to translate what your what your mama is. Remember, this is a hijack abstraction trying to translate Hebrew and the Hebrew people who don't even recognize them or know who they are. He just thinks it's all the same, but it's not, but it is, but it's not. Here's your mom. I'll put it in six bullet points. <laughs> And the end says that the secret of wisdom was learn evil from evil. Come on, man. Dodge the hijack. That's why you got the pure water of you without rolling, man. 
That's why we got the pure water over here rolling at all times. Anytime they say some bullshit, we can just come back over here. Right to Utah. <laughs> right into the four corners. The cross. And just surf the wave in Judah. You know? Nah, no, no big deal. Surf the wave in Judah, man. Alright. So learn from your mistakes. Don't try to go into spiritualism. Because it's dangerous. Evil. Well, it's one of those yes and no. It's unknown. Wow. And typically we fear the unknown. And if you fear something, you immediately associate it as bad or evil. Then again, it's also that we have only been taught and trained and indoctrinated in one point of view. I mean, evil is the reverse of live. So, even wow. the infinite says that if you're going to be a seeker of wisdom, you have to be strong enough. You also have to have discretion. You also have to have discretion. And before you ever start any journey, you have to take inventory of yourself. This is part of what this book is about. Mm. The discovery of yourself and being able to take that journey of the 32 paths to seek God. And notice that wisdom is above all division, right? So we can't be divided over our pronunciation or where we're at or our, uh, you know, scholarly scholarship, you know what I mean? Like, the Creator just wants us to wake up and go home, man. He's going to give us the frequency, and that is the name. The frequency is the fire, the water, the air, the earth. That's the name. You are that. You are a dime. You shine like a crystal. A crystal is the fire, the water, the air, the earth. You have that power. That's the name. The name is just not some some uh, two-dimensional, uh, just that. You can't just get it in that, you know what I mean? But when you are speaking that pure water, you know, you can at least, you know what I'm saying, tap in to the great greatness of above. And that's what we do by, you know what I'm saying, a wa wa. I mean... To us, we've tapped in to the furthest and best of our ability in real time together. You know, a path, a door. We walk through a door, and it's a beautiful thing. Wisdom is above all division. All right, so let's be uh, let's be tribed up. Let's be vibed up. Wisdom is simply unity. You know, I have so many people that when I was a very devoted practicing Christian that are very, very concerned about me. But what they do not understand, and they can't understand, it is a God spell. And it's much like you being sprayed with a skunk. That marvelous odor will not come off. And no matter where you go, people are going to know that you stink. It's the same way when you actually come out from underneath God's spell. Because those people, and, I, and I'm using it metaphorically, they think that we stink. Like, what have you done? What do you mean you're turning your back on your religion? How could you do that to God? Well, what they don't understand is that the sojourners that I meet, you, a lot of you who are listening to me, you're there. 
yeah, I may be, you know, listen, even when I was in the Boy Scouts, um, I was the rabbit. They put me at right. the front. We'll jump ahead a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Boy Scouts. Come has on, been man. created. Drop the drop, man. Been using us. Come on. I keep telling you this. You are an amazing individual is not enough. He's talking to you. Consciousness is the best phrase. And you're powerful. He's talking to you. You're so powerful. We all are powerful. Uh -huh. Religions feed off of us. <laughs> Financially and every other way. The evil rulers of, you know, listen, everyone, we know who they are. They feed off of us. And what I'm learning in this book, I know why. Let's go on. Drop the drop. So, as we go through the Sephar, we're going to discover <clears throat> that this is about ascending. Ascending. Traveling outside the body. Hmm. And always seeking to get closer to the infinite being. Ah, uh, wow. Now, I know it's going to sound somewhat sacrilegious. But that means arising above God. Whoa. For if God was <laughs> a hijack, man, this train is never late. You see, all they need is a little slither to want to be above God. But then they're going to say, uh, you know, it's deeper than the word God. But then he's going to keep using the word God and then separate that with this infinite being. And say, yeah, you know, there's a God and there's an infinite being. And we know that God is just dog. We're only talking dog to them. Traveling outside of the body. And always seeking to get closer to the infinite being. Now, I know it's going to sound somewhat sacrilegious. But that means arising above God. Well, I For guess you have to arise above a dog. You have to rise above the beast. The dog is the beast. Columbus is the dog. So whatever he's getting out of this is not what you're getting out of this. It's not what we're getting out of this. That's why we have the document ourselves and we can dig on it. You know, I just wanted to you know, keep, you know, for myself, you know what I'm saying, keep the interest flowing because I'm very interested in, uh, you know, something about this flow. So, yeah, man, we're digging on it. Rise above the dog. Rise above the beast. The God is the dog. Is there serious? Is there dog-headed? Is there canine, canine? Is there Poseidon? All right, all right. Let go. So rise above God, rise above the dog, the beast, the flesh, rise above the beast. We're just talking about the infinite being. We're talking about the secure breath, the ha wa. God was created by the infinite being. Then that's a game changer. You see how he's just flipping. So, you know, the most high is never confusing you know what I'm saying it's always simple when we break it down you know he could say oh the God God was created by the infinite being so at this point <laughs> you got it got you asking questions back to him all right well who's who do you consider God that was created by the infinite being and if the God is what we consider creation then we are that which was created by the infinite being and we are the gods amongst men we are the Elohim Elohim 
amongst men on this earth. We are the beacons. We are the images. We are the so-called gods, but we don't say that word. We don't speak English, right? Wow. Oh, wow. So, the God he's referring to that was created is the so-called Negro that will be restored in the kingdom that is already among us. Now, we've all been taught, at least I have, and it is, again, replete through the Bible that we have been made equal with God. Wow. <laughs> is he talking about God or the infinite being at this point? He, they always want to be equal to the Creator. But you see how confusing it becomes because every time you're like, is he talking about the Creator or the creation? Or the creation's creation. Alright, so keep surfing away, man. You know, boogie board, be water. I mean, that's the big thing about New Testament uh, theology. So, if there is something above God, which, again, we have evidence of that in the Bible. then that means there is a path that can be obtained to get to the infinite being. Was continued with wisdom. Below wisdom, lower levels, does the division between good and evil exist. So it's right below wisdom that the division now is set, that there is good and evil. And look at it, it exists. <laughs> so remember, wisdom is above the barrier, you know what I'm saying? Your framer and your shaper are together. So below your framer and shaper, the lower levels. What's the division? It's the firmament. That is that, you know, chart that he kept, you know, putting up with the firmament. That's the separation, that's the barrier, that's why we say above the barrier, that's the division between good and what they're calling evil or twisted. That which is twisting good, that which is twisting the drop. So below that is the firmament. And soon there will not be a need for a barrier when everything is, you know, in proper order. This, folks. By the statement alone, there never will be in this lower level an elimination of either good or evil. <clears throat> now, it will flow back and forth, yes. The antithesis of wisdom is understanding. How about that? How could it be the opposite? Understanding is just below wisdom. Understanding is where things delineate and define as separate. And the what level happens of wisdom, in our community, you have brothers that are kicking knowledge and they, have un they think they have understanding and then you have a wave that's being served. A way where your mother's connecting to you that's being served. So it's beyond the understanding. It's beyond the standing contract. We're going to be back at that syntax. It's your mother. It's the wave. It's the wata you're swimming in. System. All men are included in a single world soul. This is very important. The level of wisdom. This is where the infinite dwells. All men are included in a single world soul. Meditate on that. I did this morning. Whoa. Oh, man. <clears throat> I apologize for the allergies. It's a uh, ragweed season. It's gotten here early. Understanding is where the soul of each 
individual assumes a distinct identity and is seen as a separate entity. Mm, duality. The yeah. divine name associated with understanding is Elohim. Mm. Elohim is pearl. Polarity of forces. The yin and the yang. So think of it this way. If you're the Elohim, remember, you're the creation, right? So you were created by the creator. You are the Elohim. He's the infinite being. You're the so-called God. You're the, you're the Elohim. Now they're calling you the antithesis of wisdom or the antithesis in that sense by calling you understanding because now you're under you're under the barrier you're under the standing contract that stands above the barrier there's levels to this so now you're the antithesis why because you're the image, but by being the image, it doesn't mean that you are in the, you know what I'm saying, in the exact octave of the creator at this point. I mean, remember, the creator's at the throne, the frame and shape is on the throne, baby. So even when we talk 432, we're just talking about getting above the barrier. You double that, you're in another octave, you're in 864, you double that, you're in 1728. You double that, you're in 3456. You double that, where are you, man? I don't know. You do the math. <laughs> and tune into these frequencies. Keep doubling them, you're in a higher octave. So your creator's way in this octave. You got to tune up. You are, in this comprehension, the antithesis. When you are not choosing up, you're understanding. You're under. But your whole journey is to get back to wisdom, to get back to your level, the level of wisdom. All men are included in a single world soul to get back to the singularity. Because we're all reflections, we're all images, and our goal is to gather, to walk, to do what? We're surfing the wave, man. We're taking our time around here, man. Let's just go, man. How about, how about we just let go? Can we just let go one time? You're walking. You got your frequency. It's going into your heart, into your house bone. You're gathering. You're walking through a door. Move, hang, entrance. They say man with arms raising. Now that's your mama with her arms open. Your breath giving you life. Then it's your why, it's your security, it's your foundation, it's your hook, it's your vibration. Then you take a break and you cut off everything because now you have returned to your mother and your father. You take a break, now you can rest, now you can get in your redemption vibration. Why? Because the levels of wisdom, all men are included in a single world soul. You are now back connected. There's no more duality. Below your frame and shaper, the lower levels, does the division between good and evil exist. And remember, wisdom overcomes all division, so it, it takes our mother to overcome all the barriers that are between us as family and I'm surfing away with you both positive and negative wisdom is undifferential understanding divides wow. the paths wow. now you can't get to wisdom without understanding uh-oh uh-oh so you can't get to your mama <laughs> without going through the path without the test without the toiling without being stripped of everything without the understanding 
without having no standing contract. You're going to have to lose your standing contract. Be stripped of your what, what you remember of a covenant. You don't, you don't have no memory. You got no contract. You don't think you do. Of course, you always have your birthright, but you know you you fell out of memory of it. So hey, it doesn't exist until you create it. And as creators, you must recreate your existence, recreate your inheritance, recreate your kingdom. Walk around and look around and say, "I am home." I didn't just arrive on some boat hundreds of years ago, nigga. You just found me in my new world, right? Copper color races found here by the so-called European now calling themselves Americans. They have your con. They have your con, Negro. They have your priest. They have your priesthood. They have your inheritance. Con means priest. Americon, priest. Prester, priest. <laughs> Come on, man. Who is Preston John? There's levels to this. And I do believe it may take epochs for all of us to achieve that. The symbolism of the infinite. Wisdom <clears throat> is nonverbal thought. Understanding is verbalization. Wisdom and understanding are thus seen as male and female. Mm. Now get this. Abba Father, Ima, Ima Mother. Thus the primary letters are called Mothers. Mothers. Can you dig it? Can you dig the drop? Can you dig the drop? You got to see this in multiple dimensions. It's not just one thing. Look at it through different lenses. Through the same harmonic frequency. When we're in the pop of a, Where they just found you, Negro. And this Father Domenico de Viso used their quiche root names to refer to the power of the Old Testament. We're talking about these pair, this wisdom, and what they're calling now understanding in the dimension of it being male and female. The framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned powers involved in creation, man. Wakey, wakey. You have a wife, you have a husband, in your house, you are a reflection of a divine house with a wife and a husband. You are the creation of your framer and your shaper. Framer refers to one who makes something by putting things together, a meal from various ingredients. Shaper refers to one who makes something by modeling or molding pottery from clay, a sculpture from carved stone. I formed you. I shaped you. You are ours. Put no Elohim, no powers before us. Your mama and your dada. surfing the way in real time wisdom and understanding are thus seen as male and female so you now we, we surf the way with it being you know under under you going through this you know what I'm saying now remember how they said they flipped every all the frequency to a to a male frequency so now we're in the male frequency in this understanding with no standing contract but when we connect back, we are back to our father, back to our shape. At its highest frequency, it's no longer understanding. It's overstanding because you're over the barrier. Now you're Abba Father with your mama, your Ima, Ma, Ma, Mama, Ima, your mother, wisdom, 
and overstanding. So we're talking about the primary letters are called mothers. Dig on it. Monotheism? I don't see it. Do you? <laughs> so, this for me makes sense. Intuitively, it makes sense. I'm not having to sit and rationalize it. I'm not trying to sit here and dissect it to make it fit. It just flows, does it not? Wisdom and understanding are thus seen as male and female, Abba Father, Emma Mother. Frame and shape it. Connects the dots, doesn't it? So here we are back again to this covenant of unity. Now, I'm coaching a couple of you folks on the side, and this is what I mean by creating your spear. Alan, are you listening? The tree of life is a spear. Each of us are, in fact, spears. Remember what it said? That the infinite sees the souls, us, all as a soul of man, of a world? So that covenant of unity, keep thinking about it. All right. So the next section that we have, that we read of the stanza was this, the engraved. The creator used the 32 paths to engrave as to create the universe and all realities and all levels of consciousness. The Creator removed material to create. Does this... The Creator removed material to create? What does it say in the Papu Vah? Since we are, you know, juxtaposing, we are doing some comparative analysis about the framer and shape of the most frequently mentioned powers. Their names imply that the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter that already existed. Again. Each of us are, in fact, spirits. Remember what it said? That the infinite sees the souls, us, all as a soul of man, of a world? So that covenant of unity, keep thinking about it. Wow. All right, so the next section that we have, that we read of the stanza was this, the engraved. The Creator used the 32 paths to engrave as to create the universe and all realities and all levels of consciousness. The Creator removed uh, material to create. The creator removed material. Does to this create. not fit quantum mechanics? Does it not fit the pop of what? Their names imply that the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter that already existed. Remove material to create. 
rather than conjuring something out of nothing. This pair of powers was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Vizio used their root quiche names found here, Copper Color Negro, with you, Copper Color Negro, to refer to the power of the Copper Color Negro that they're calling now the Old Testament or Tanakh. That's separated from the bullshit that they brought us later with this 1611 King James hijack. Let's get a little bit more. The creator removed material to create. The undifferential light of the infinite which existed before the constriction is on the level of wisdom which is the undelineated <coughs> mind. Hmm. I'll be very candid with you. I'm still processing that. What is an undelineated mind? I thought you never asked, man. I mean, really, uh, you know, Wayne Steiger. And again, man, much, much props and appreciation to Wayne Steiger, man. We're just surfing the wave. We ain't trying to, you know, we ain't trying to bust nobody, you know. I mean, we're just, we're just surfing the wave, man. That's it, man. I don't know how to spell it. Let's try it. Undele. Undelineated. Let's just look at delineated. Delineated or portrayed on the precise the past tense. To describe, present, outline, sketch, depict. Delineate. Wow. Delineate 1500s from Latin delineatus, past participle of delineare, to sketch out, completely draw lines. So if you have a delineated mind, be able to sketch out or you know it's it's something that's complete to be able to draw lines or connect it an undelineated mind means I guess that you can't draw it out you can't sketch it out it's incomplete so let's go back you know just just getting the drive man <clears throat> yeah. let's keep going I've never met one never seen one Never spoke to one. Unless you say prayer is speaking. But I can't apprehend that. Let's go on. Understanding is called the Lamb of Darkness. Wow. Probably because you have to wander through darkness to get back to Hawaii. The order was first engraving, then creation. I don't... Are you seeing this mental imagery of this? On a scale greater than the known universe itself? I mean, just this alone here, I think, could take a lifetime fully comprehending. Mm. A lifetime isn't enough time. It just isn't. So now... 
when you look at this, start applying what we've been reading here. And are you seeing now? This is what I am seeing. Everywhere I look, I see new shapes. And it just continues. And what the picture is not revealing all the way my soul is. I wonder if that's significant. Now, the next part was the engraved yaw. The first thing the infinite being created was the Elohim and its name. When read in the beginning, all references are to the infinite being, not the Elohim, Lord, God, or anything other than the infinite. Mm. Well, that would make sense to me now. Because the infinite was there before the beginning. And this ties in completely seamlessly with all the other ancient documents I'm reading. Engraved means to form a clear mental image of the name and meditate on it. I dare say, and if we were all honest with ourselves, I haven't done this yet. I mean, because the image that I have had, oh, that wouldn't have been too good to meditate on. <laughs> I'm just saying. And then here is the last part to this section. You, yourself, can create anything. anything. Meditate, Negro. Now, I did our session energizing within. And here, this has been passed down by Abram. It goes back Thousands and thousands of years, supposedly. I can see, I, I can understand it. I mean, just exposing yourself to reading this, I mean, it opens up channels. Hmm. But more importantly, you, yourself, can create anything. anything. The Emerald Tablet, put off. Uh-oh. Love the dude. <laughs> I really hope that he exists. He loves stuff. He'd be someone I'd. <laughs> he loves stuff. You know, I'm like, what do you expect, man? Hijack the hijack, man. But you get it, man. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. Engraved means to form, to mold. You're talking about your shaper, a clear mental image. Of the name, the name, we're talking about fire, water, air, earth, and meditate on it. You yourselves can create anything. We're talking about the creation's creation. And how, you know, I guess through, through these elements, you know, they were able to create souls. Wow. And what does that have to do with the synthetics? And the misuse of things in Atlantis and the sinking of all these lands and everything that seems to be more recent than not. You tell me, man. We're going to make our dismount as promised, man, with the bro. Jerusalem. We surfing the way with Jerusalem over here, man. He got his own water. He got his own water, man. Yeah, man, we're going to turn it down, man. We're gonna turn it way down for the bro. There we go. We're gonna turn it way down for the bro. Love to peruse and love to teach, man. Teach me to be priestly. You know what I'm saying? This is fam bam. This is the one, two. Bing bow. You know what I mean? So, love to these bros that 
have given us so much drive, man, for so, so long. And I just love the way things are vibrate, man. So let's get to this perusal. You got the drop. The link is below. You can click on it. Make sure you subscribe. The bro's coming with Mo. Pray for the bro. He's out there in Texas, man. So he's out there securing his family. And uh, he says he says it's all good, man. So keep praying for the bro and his family. Let go. Trees of righteousness. We're talking cedars. We're talking whiteness. We're talking the uncorruptible. Let go. Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. All praise to the Most High. Wow. This is part two. And we're going to be going back into these trees of righteousness. Okay, I'm going to touch up on this part a little more. Okay, as you can see, the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So, you know, the Most High called us the trees of righteousness. And I, as I stated on part one, the trees of righteousness is what? The strength that worked the staff or the power that worked the rod, right? That desired the eternal pathway. And we know this is what? The planning of the Lord that he might be glorified. So we just call the trees of righteousness because this is the planning of the Lord that he may be glorified. All right. So I just wanted to touch up on that. Now we're going to be going going into the second phase of it. We're going into Psalms 92 verse 12. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did on part one. I'm going to break down the words. Come on. Right. So we got the righteous shall flourish. We're going to come to the word flourish as you can see the word flourish right here Let me go over here the word flourish right here is parak right and the strong numbers right here is h6524 so we got the word pa 